Hey Scorpio, this is your 2023 look ahead forecast and can be watched for Scorpio sun, moon or rising signs. Today we're going to be covering off the major planetary shifts taking place next year and how those could impact your life. Bear in mind, this is a general forecast, and specific events will depend on your own individual natal chart, so we'll confine ourselves to the overarching themes that you could expect next year. If you're cross-watching, then just note that the first couple of minutes of this video is once again a rundown of the position of the planets on January the 1st, 2023, and then where they close out the year. So, if you already saw that on another video, then feel free to skip ahead a bit to the discussion of the planets in the houses. With that, let's dive right in and take a peek at the year ahead. We begin the year under the following planetary configurations. Mercury will be retrograde since the 29th of December. It will be at 23 degrees 25 minutes of Capricorn, separating from a fairly wide conjunction to Venus, which is also in Capricorn. Mars will still be retrograde at 8 degrees 59 minutes of Gemini and will turn direct on the 12th of January. Jupiter will have just ingressed into Aries, beginning the year at 1 degree 15 minutes of Aries. Saturn will be direct at 22 degrees 28 minutes of Aquarius, Uranus, still retrograde, begins the year at 15 degrees of Taurus, Neptune, also direct, at 22 degrees of Pisces, and Pluto, which is direct as well, begins the year at 27 degrees 40 minutes of Capricorn. For comparison, we'll end the year with Mercury returning full circle to Capricorn, where it will be retrograde on December the 31st, meaning that it will have completed three retrogrades, which we will talk about during this forecast. Venus will almost have circumnavigated the entire chart and will close out the year having just entered Sagittarius. Mars will travel halfway around the zodiac, ending the year in the sign of Sagittarius as well. Jupiter will end the year at 5 degrees of Taurus. Saturn will dance around the early degrees of Pisces throughout most of the year. Uranus will make it about 8 degrees throughout the year, closing out 2023 at 19 degrees of Taurus in retrograde. Neptune will move a measly 3 degrees in Pisces. And Pluto, after entering Aquarius, will retreat back into Capricorn, where it will close out the year on the anoretic degree or the 29th degree of Capricorn. So, in short, Mercury's movements will be swift and predictable with its usual retrograde movements, will have a Venus retrograde to deal with, after Mars turns direct it will spend the entire year direct, Jupiter will change signs and turn retrograde, Saturn will change signs and turn retrograde, Uranus and Neptune will continue their crawls through Taurus and Pisces respectively, and will all get a little taste of Pluto in Aquarius before having to put up with it back in Capricorn again. So let's break down planet by planet what the year ahead could bring up for you thematically. First off, Mercury retrogrades for 2023 will take place from April the 21st to May 14th in Taurus, from August the 23rd to September 15th in Virgo, and from December 13th to January 1st, 2024 between Capricorn and Sagittarius. With the usual dread of internet memes, we can all expect some do-overs, miscommunications, missed appointments, or blasts from our past during this time, but I would note that if you have any Mercury retrograde placements natally, you could get through these times a little bit easier than the rest of us. And of course, if Mercury isn't passing over any natal planets, if it isn't the lord of your year by perfection or otherwise affected somehow in a natal or progressed chart, then this may not be as significant as the meme world makes out. However, your 7th house of relationships, your 11th house of friends, associates, hopes and dreams, and your 3rd house of siblings, neighbors, communications, and learning are all going to be activated by the April, August, and December Mercury retrograde periods. In each of these areas, you could see some minor and more personal setbacks, reversals, or blasts from the past, but I don't think that the August and December retrogrades will be as prominent as the April one for you, which is angular, and at some point will hit the degree of your descendant, potentially making this retrograde feel much more personal and directly impactful 
as well as relating to some sort of an ending in a relationship. And by ending here, I'm thinking more of an ending of a certain theme or a certain cycle in a relationship. But also, you can't discount the fact that Mercury rules both your house of networks, friends, mentors, and your eighth house of other people's resources. And so there could be a more literal change taking place in your close relationships that pull in these thematic topics as well. Next, where Venus is concerned, the ruler of your 7th and 12th houses will be transiting your 10th house, which, while the angularity of Venus in the 10th will be exceptional for you in terms of career matters, it could pull in some more difficult topics pertaining to the 12th house and to your relationships as well. One potential signification for some of you might be a work-related relocation abroad that involves your spouse, which, given Uranus's presence in the 7th, could bring in more of that unexpected flavor. However, this could also pertain to certain endings, transformations, and changes that all bear on your career and relationships. Given that Venus is also the planet bearing natural significations of relationships, balance, and equilibrium, this could be much more of a relationship-focused transit for you overall career-wise, with a greater emphasis being placed on these topics as they relate to your ambitions and to your professional standing. Now, Venus will be turning retrograde between July the 22nd and September the 3rd in the sign of Leo, your 10th house, but I expect the effects of this retrograde to be largely mitigated by angularity. Nonetheless, it goes without saying to pay attention to the pre-retrograde shadow periods bookending Venus's direction shift, since this can be a much more important time to watch events unfold in our lives. Sometimes, if Venus hits any natal directed or progressed planets while direct, it can hit them again while retrograde, making this a 2 and 3 peak transit, and for those of you with a Leo MC, this could also impact the angle depending on the degree, and so that's why we typically pay attention to any noteworthy events initiated by the alchemical goddesses' movements during the pre-retrograde shadow period. Due to its retrograde motion, Venus could bring in an element of a redo, a blast from the past, especially concerning work and relationships, or some perceived setbacks. But again, if this does occur, I don't think that it will be significant given Venus's accidental dignity in an angular house. And while this may seem like an arbitrary warning to shoehorn in here, as Venus rules your 7th house and will be retrograde, potentially hold off on making any marriage plans or getting married during Venus's retrograde motion if you can. While this transit may not last long, it's nonetheless worthwhile paying attention to anything that could crop up in and around this time, and of course, Venus will initiate its new synodic cycle in your 10th house on August the 13th, 2023, potentially ushering in a new phase in your career and relationships. Beginning June the 6th to October the 8th, Venus will transit the sign of Virgo, where its effects may be subtler, but also more difficult difficult since there are quite a few degrees in which Venus is not dignified in Virgo and overall in the sign she is largely in the place of her fall. This is a signature under which you could find yourself being much more critical of your friends and associates or more nitpicky about who you want in your life but thankfully this will be a fairly short transit. Then from October the 9th to November the 8th Venus will transit your 12th house where, despite being stronger by domicile, she is still in a fairly challenging house, so just be on the lookout for any heightened feelings of isolation that you could feel in relationship matters. The good news here is that after November the 8th, Venus will enter your first house, and though traditionally a place of Venus's detriment, the angularity will help make Venus infinitely more benefic, presenting positive opportunities for you personally and with respect to your relationships. Just watch out that Venus transiting your first doesn't make you a little too indolent or prone to overindulgence, though I have a feeling that your martial ruled sixth house rarely allows for that to happen. Venus will end the year entering Sagittarius a few days before the ball drops on the 31st, entering your second house and ushering in some potentially benefic financial blessings into 2024. Next, your ascendant ruler Mars, which was part of a major storyline for everyone throughout the second half of 2022, returns to direct motion on January the 12th. Mars will be direct the entire year, 
circumnavigating about half the zodiac, closing out the year beginning November the 24th in your Sagittarius ruled second house. Pay careful attention to events between March the 25th to May the 20th when Mars will be in the place of its fall in your ninth house. This could be a period where you could experience some challenges in the sector of your life pertaining to higher learning, religion, spirituality, philosophy, the law, or foreign travel. After May 20th, however, Mars's condition remains decent, as it picks up dignity in the 10th house, giving you a nice burst of career-related motivation. On July the 10th, Mars enters your 11th house, taking its more martial skills and predilections over to the sector of your house pertaining to friends, associates, networks, mentors, social groups, and hopes, dreams, and wishes. Mars in Mercury's more analytical and detail-oriented domicile could help you get more strategic about your ambitions and the people who could support you to get where you want to be. Mars will take a major dignity hit beginning August the 27th when it enters the sign of Libra and your 12th house. You may want to prepare yourself for some potential challenges in the areas of isolation, chronic illness, alienation, retreat, and psychological challenges. Now, I don't want to scare anyone since we have all lived with an abundance of planets transiting through our 12th houses at any given time, but I just want to flag a need for extra care to be taken for you, Scorpio, since this is your ascendant ruler in a house that's known for being the joy of Saturn. Be careful, since Mars can always portend to accidents, or it can stir up some mental angst, and since this house connects to your seventh house of relationships by shared rulership, it's worthwhile being on your guard nevertheless. Mars will, of course, get a massive dignity boost in the first weeks of October, hitting your first house where it is said to be in haze and therefore to be most likely to behave in a highly productive way, but it's also angular, and having your ascendant ruler in domicile and in your first is a particularly powerful combination. This will be a great six weeks for you personally, coinciding with potential feelings of ambition, drive, and vigor, but again, pay attention since Mars transiting the first always heightens the potential for accidents, given that this is really the house that is most directly pertaining to you, your body, and your constitution. Mars will, of course, close out the year beginning November the 24th in the sign of Sagittarius, which will see it struggle a bit, potentially with impulse purchases or excess spending, especially since the ruler of your second will be in aversion to the house that it rules sitting in your seventh house of relationships where it has no sightline to help poor old Mars out. Next, Jupiter, which transited through your 6th and 7th houses in 2022, activating the topics of your children, creativity, work, health, service, and servitude, daily routines, and house pets, will continue its transit through your 6th, keeping the latter topics activated throughout the first part of 2023. Now, the sixth house can be a slightly challenging one, and even though Jupiter has some dignity by triplicity, it may only be able to expand whatever it touches. So occasionally this could mean for you, Scorpio, that Jupiter may not have necessarily brought work blessings, so much as the blessing of more work. So, since you already had a taste of what Jupiter brought to your Aries-ruled sixth house back in 2022, you'll have some indication of how it finishes off this transit throughout your sixth house this year. Jupiter will change signs on May the 17th, entering the sign of Taurus and your 7th house, where it will expand and bring potentially beneficial blessings to the topics of relationships. Some Jupiter transits through the 7th can bring marriages, and so if any of you Scorpios are out there wondering if you ought to put a ring on it, or you have already, then Jupiter's transit through this house could bring you the push that you need to tie the knot. Just be aware of the presence of slightly malefic Uranus in this house, which, though it will be a ways away from Jupiter by partile aspect, is still in a a sign-based conjunction, and any natal activations to your own individual chart could potentially throw a little destabilization into your life, but nothing, I'm sure, that you, Scorpio, can't handle. As Jupiter will turn retrograde in the sign of Taurus at 15 degrees 34 minutes on September the 4th, you may want to begin paying attention to events in your life related to the 7th house topics beginning around June the 11th. 
and note that there could be some Iranian influence around the station, which includes a bit of a surprising, destabilizing, or unpredictable occurrence. This said, Jupiter is angular, and so I do think that a lot of the challenge from retrogradation will likely be negated, but nonetheless, forewarned is forearmed, as they say. Jupiter will slow down from June the 11th, so that will be an especially powerful time for the planet and a potentially heightened period for expansive activities. Use the time between September the 4th and December the 30th when Jupiter returns to direct motion at 5 degrees 35 minutes of Taurus to undertake any important redos or to rethink your relationship plans. Overall, however, this is going to be a really lovely transit for you, Scorpio, so relish this portion of Jupiter's journey through your relationship house. Next, Saturn is one of the big sign changes that we're all looking forward to in 2023. For you, Scorpio, this will mean that Saturn will be entering your fifth house of children, pleasure, creativity, and side hustles. Now, Saturn doesn't especially care for the watery, diffuse, and sometimes slippery sign of Pisces, and typically brings a kind of heaviness with it wherever it goes. But it's also a time where you could find great benefits in erecting boundaries, getting clear on your priorities, taking stock of the areas in your life where things may not be paying off, and doing the work, so to speak, to make the most of Saturn's two-and-a-half-year sojourn. So, Saturn making its way through your fifth house could bring some challenges with respect to children if you have them, likely in the area of boundary setting. And if you're a more creative type, then this could be a transit where you may struggle for some of the Jupiterian lightness that this house secretly craves, and so it could bring a weightier, more sullen period to your creative pursuits. Saturn can also be a planet of retreat and isolation, so another signification here could be a desire to regroup or to gain perspective in fifth house matters, and Saturn could be forcing you to confront some more serious issues that you may have been putting off previously. Saturn will enter Pisces on March the 7th, and so you'll want to pay attention to any Saturnian events that pull in the topics from your third and fourth houses as well. Those are the houses concerning siblings, neighbors, communications and learning, as well as home, family and property. Since Saturn will turn retrograde at 7 degrees 12 minutes of Pisces on June the 17th, going all the way back to 0 degrees 31 minutes of the sign on November the 3rd where it will station direct, paying attention to events upon Saturn's ingress into Pisces will be especially critical. And of course, if you want to go a bit deeper, then please don't forget to check out my dedicated Saturn and Pisces forecast for all rising signs to get more information about the implications of this transit for you next year. Next, Uranus and Taurus is going to enjoy being free from restrictive Saturn's influence from early March as Saturn slips into a sign-based sextile. The Saturn-Uranus square likely highlighted for many of you Scorpios out there a pull between obligation and restriction in your home and family life and a desire for more liberty and freedom in your relationships. As Saturn slips into a sign-based sextile with Uranus, you may have some positive opportunities to deepen relationships with children and to get that liberation you seek through more creative endeavors even if they are weighted down by leaden Saturn. Now, I won't touch very much on Neptune's transit since it remains in Pisces and we'll all continue feeling the effects of its sometimes disorienting, discombobulating, and confusing energy for some while. But don't forget that Neptune is also the planet of dreams and transcendence, and in your fifth house, this could have you dreaming up creative possibilities or certain hopes for your children and their welfare. Neptune has been in this area of your chart for over a decade, and so, if this transit has coincided with any rethinks of the quality of your creative pursuits, your priorities, and your relationships with your offspring, then having Saturn slide into the same sign could help pin nebulous Neptune down for concretization, as we already mentioned. Finally, Pluto in Aquarius is the moment that we've all been waiting for, though it's a bit of a tease since Pluto will dance between Aquarius and Capricorn for the next two years. Suffice to say, 
Pluto will initiate a large-scale transformation of your fourth house, and so you may find yourself going through what Libra Risings did when Pluto was in Capricorn, namely some challenging episodes relating to home and family and to your own personal foundations and priorities, particularly as Pluto transits your IC or makes any hard aspects to natal planets and to your angles, so check your own chart to see how and when Pluto's transit through the fourth will impact you. Before I wrap, we've got to chat eclipses, since these will be alternating between your 1st and 7th houses of yourself and your relationships, and your 6th and 12th houses of health, work, service, isolation, and obligation. First, the hybrid solar eclipse of April the 20th, 2023 will take place in your 6th house in a loose conjunction to Jupiter with the eclipse ruler and your ascendant ruler, Mars, in the 9th. This could be an important new beginning for you work-wise, which could see you pull in the topics of higher learning, spirituality, religion, philosophy, and foreign travel. By contrast, the penumbral lunar eclipse on May the 5th in your first house, the sign of Scorpio, will highlight more charged emotions in the areas relating to yourself, your constitution, your goals, psychology, and everything, in a nutshell, that pertains to you personally. With the moon in a loose opposition to Uranus conjunct the sun in the seventh house, this could have quite an impact on your life path as it pertains to any important person in your life and whether you are both on the same trajectory. The unstable flavor of this eclipse will be owing to Uranus, which could heighten anxieties concerning your closest relationships and whether they are helping free you and to support you towards achieving your hopes and dreams. The ruler of this eclipse is, of course, Mars, your ascendant ruler, up in the ninth house of higher learning, foreign travel, and spirituality and religion, and so this could have a very ninth house flavor to it, including some existential questions that this lunation could bring up for you. Since both Mars and the Moon are in the place of their fall, this could be a less than ideal lunation, despite the fact that the Moon might be redeemed by being angular and in mutual reception with Mars up in Cancer. So while I think that these positions can take most of the sting out of the eclipse, the Uranus wildcard remains something to watch for. Next, on October the 14th, the annular solar eclipse is taking place in your 12th house, which could be a tougher lunation, especially if it, acti- especially if it activates any planets for you natally. This could be a lunation activating a new beginning pertaining to your psychological underpinnings, and even to more challenging health matters, but because it's not angular, its effects could be more subtle, including simply initiating something for you that's likely out of your sightline and which might come to fruition and visibility at a later date. I wouldn't necessarily sweat this eclipse, but I would, however, remain on my guard and abstain from doing anything particularly extraordinary during this lunation, like traveling or initiating a new venture, both of which are among the typical ancient eclipse no-nos. Finally, the partial lunar eclipse occurring on October the 28th at 5 degrees 3 minutes of Taurus shines a spotlight on your 7th house again, and since the moon is exalted in the co-presence of a strong Jupiter, I do also like the signature for you and for your relationships, which are, of course, getting an awful lot of play this year. The ruler of this eclipse, Venus, is in the 11th house, and though she's in a tougher spot in Virgo, she does have the benefit of being in a more pleasant house, which could bode well for your friends, associations, hopes, wishes, and dreams overall, and so I wouldn't really worry too much about this lunation, especially since Venus is disposed by an angular Mercury, almost conjunct Mars, your ascendant ruler, in the first house, making this a more potent dispositor. Overall, Scorpio, I think that this year will have a number of high points, so I hope that you're looking forward to the astrology of 2023. With that, have a happy, healthy, and prosperous new year. Until next time, Scorpio, be well and take care.